It's a very well organized and safe operation. Every morning there's a plan of the day that the subcontractor holds before they even do anything. It's a lot of people working on a very big project. So we have a lot of accumulated coal ash on site and in D area we have the largest amount of it. We have to be very careful about the traffic patterns because of the heavy equipment. It's a busy place. For nearly 60 years, much of the steam and power needed to operate Savannah Riverside was produced by burning coal at the 75 megawatt D area powerhouse. In 2012, the facility was decommissioned and is scheduled for demolition. One byproduct from the plant, a watery ash laden solution, was pumped to holding basins for collection and control. Now, over 90 acres of coal ash contaminated land at D area is being remediated. The project, which began in 2015 and is expected to be finished in 2019, is managed by SRNS Area Completion Projects, or ACP. ACP is responsible for the investigation, assessment, remediation, and closure of SRS legacy waste units and associated surface water and groundwater plumes at SRS. We have a very good team. It's a very structured interdisciplinary organization with scientists, engineers, project management type people, project controls type folks, environmental compliance people, and operations people. Elevated levels of arsenic in the coal ash posed a direct exposure risk to humans and wildlife, and runoff from the ponds had the potential to leach into groundwater. Unique physical characteristics of coal ash also made it difficult to contain. When the coal is fired, there is a residual that's not combustible, and it's essentially the soil materials that's in the coal that's not carbon. But the temperature is so high in a coal-fired power plant that that ash is converted from soil material to glass, and so it's vitrified. When you look at it under a microscope, it's a little round ball, kind of puffed up. It's like a bead, but that shape provides no cohesive strength in the sense of you can put it in a pile and you can put a load on it and it will stay where you put it. It will move. And so it's a challenge to deal with in a construction sense and in a civil engineering sense. The Deere Ash Project actually covers almost 100 acres of ash basins, landfill, and the coal power runoff basin. So the challenge was, how do we consolidate all of this ash, coal rejects, and contaminator impacted soil in a safe and protective manner? The solution is to consolidate 1.3 million cubic yards of ash and soil into two large mounds. Then cap it with a multi-layered system, including an impermeable geosynthetic cover. Spread over two phases, the constructed landfills will prevent rainwater from infiltrating and potentially transporting the polluted ash off-site. The first step in getting the ash covered, of course, is getting it onto the landfill and dried and compacted into a somewhat stable process. And so what we've done is we've removed ash from the 488 2D basin and placed it into the 488 4D landfill. And we've consolidated it there, reworked it such that it has the shape that we'd like for it to have, which is a soil impound area. And we have to keep the angle of the slopes of the cover system down low enough such that there's no potential for slope failure in the future. Next, a clean layer of soil goes on top of the ash, gets graded, and then compacted. So the fill material comes from a local bar pit that we constructed that's about a mile and a half to two miles away. And we excavated the fill from there and we transported it by large dump trucks from the fill area to the site. And then we are in the process of laying a low permeability cap material on top of it which consists of a geosynthetic clay layer that can be rolled out. It's what we call a GCL. 
the swelling properties of a thin layer of sodium bentonite clay sandwiched between two sheets of synthetic fabric help make the GCL self-healing if any moisture should ever reach it. It's then covered with another laminated geosynthetic drainage fabric, engineered to divert water away and downgrade to a gutter system surrounding the landfill. Finally, another layer of clean fill and topsoil are laid out, graded and compacted before being vegetated with sod. The completed layup of the landfill is existing grade, ash, common fill, geosynthetic clay layer, geosynthetic drainage layer, more common fill, topsoil, and finally, sod. It's a big project. It's our biggest project in ACP. So it provides all the protection you need from a dermal contact, a superficial contact, and from migration also. They're pretty impressive. We're almost done with the first phase of the contract, which includes one ash basin, one landfill. And the second phase of the contract is kicking off, which will include another ash basin and a coal power runoff basin. The whole project will be done within three years. <laughs>